Happy Monday, 122-2024. Hope you're having a great start of the week. We want to squeeze an after school, after work story. I know I have a lot to do. Oh, and I know you have a lot to do. So let's get it in. So our next person is Paul Robeson. He was a singer, actor, and activist between 1898 and 1976. Paul was, a, was very good at a lot of things in school. He engaged in debate and public speaking. And he sang, acted in plays, and played nearly every sport. Wow, that was a true Renaissance man. Despite his talent, tell us he endured constant racism living in pre-civil rights New Jersey. His father, a Presbyterian minister who was born enslaved, instilled in Paul a drive to succeed despite the prejudices of the world around him. Paul was accepted to Rutgers, wow, university on an academic scholarship. Whoa, this is wonderful. He was also a fantastic athlete and achieved celebrity as an all-American football star. While Paul could have pursued football as his main career, he set his sights on law school. In 1923, Paul graduated from Columbia Law School. We're talking about, remember the old Robeson High School? Yeah, named after him. Come on now. So he graduated from law school. He secured a job at a white law firm, but was received with racial hostility from clients and colleagues. So he soon left. He had performed in plays all through school, so he turned to acting full-time, eventually starring in Shakespeare's Othello. When Broadway writers and producers were creating a multiracial musical called Showboat, they wrote a part for Paul. Unfortunately, he was unable to take part in that production, but he played the role in London in 1928, in 1923 Broadway revival, and in the 1936 movie. His rendition of the song, Old Man River, Old Man River, River, is legendary. Paul's acting and singing took him all over the world, and he saw how different race relations were in Europe, and the Soviet Union. Paul developed strong leftist beliefs aligning with the Communist Party. Hmm. He campaigned for workers' rights and organized for labor and peace. He became a leading activist and helped mentor others, including Claudia Jones and Harry Belafonte. Communism was labeled un-American. However, and in 1950, the State Department barred him from leaving the country in an attempt to silence him. Paul was blacklisted in the entertainment industry and his career was ruined. Didn't know that. Wow. All-American football star, academic, lawyer, actor, singer, and civil rights activist, Paul did it all, and even when he wasn't celebrated for his efforts, Paul continued to advance and advocate for equality and peace. Bless his heart. Didn't know all this about Paul Robeson. Blacklisted, but you know what? He, he is a hero. He's in this book. Didn't know he went to law school, couldn't even really practice law. Isn't that something that he graduated in 1923? A decade before, almost a decade before the recession or the Great Depression. What am I talking about? What was that? Not 1929, 1930. But it's just terrible. Okay. Aaron Douglas. Woo! He was a painter and illustrator between 1899 and 1979. Aaron always knew he wanted to be an artist. As a kid, he liked to follow along. with his mother as she drew and painted in watercolors. By the time he was a teen, he was commended as one of the best artists in his school. His journey to in art, however, was never easy. At 17, 
He worked long hours in a machine factory to earn money for college because of his race. His experiences with war, grueling labor, and discrimination stuck with him his whole life. And later they became prominent themes in his paintings. After college, Aaron read a magazine article about a new artistic scene blossoming in New York City that would soon come to be known as the Harlem Renaissance. Yes, the cover illustration by Winold Reese soon came to be known as the Harlem Renaissance. The cover illustration, yeah, by Winold Reese showed a dignified portrait of a famous African-American actor. Yeah, that's what this cover depicted. This thoughtful depiction inspired Aaron so much that he knew he needed to move to New York and create art for and about black people. In Harlem, Aaron joined the community of writers and artists that included Zora Neale Hurston, Augusta Savage, and Langston Hughes, and he studied painting under, under Winnell. He developed an iconic graphic style influenced, influenced by cubism, right? The geometrics, like what Picasso was inspired by. Cubism, art deco, and Egyptian art that challenged stereotypes of African Americans with figures that were bold and powerful. His work appeared on book covers and in journals. And in 1925, he illustrated the new Negro, Elaine Lott's defining book of the moment which solidified Aaron as the leading artist of the Harlem Renaissance. Perhaps his most significant works were his large scale murals, like the four part masterpiece, Aspects of Negro Life, commissioned, commissioned by the New York Public Library. Aaron filled these colorful paintings with stories, symbols, meanings, and beauty. He created art that he hoped would foster a strong sense of racial pride. He continued that idea in his teaching career founding the art department at Fisk University. Excellent. I tell you, is this not inspiring or not? Aaron Douglas and Paul Robinson. Wow. I am inspired to do great things. I hope you are, especially these last few days of January leading up to our high season even though every day is Black History Day, but uh, February. So let's let's make a difference, guys. Let's use our talents and uh, all the places we will go.